just waits and he stares. I had tried everything I could think of to make myself fall asleep that night. The next day was the first day of school and also my first day of high school. I finally ended up dozing off, I'd guess around 1 a.m. or so. It seemed only like moments later I was jarred awake by a loud banging sound coming down the hallway. I glanced at the clock as I was rising from my bed to check the noise to see I had only been asleep for an hour and 15 minutes. The noise seemed to be coming from my mom's room. My parents are divorced and it was only her and I in the house so I couldn't imagine what all the commotion could be. I knocked on her door and said, Mom! Somewhat loudly. The loud noise I had heard from before had stopped and now was replaced with a gurgling sound. I threw open the door and turned on the light. The image I'm about to describe to you has been burned into my memory so strongly that there isn't an hour in the day that I don't see it at least once. My mother was on the floor, bleeding profusely. A very tall and stocky masked man was standing over her with a bloody knife in his hand. Breathing heavily, I looked down again quickly to see that he had cut my mom's throat open and that she was struggling for air. That had been where the gurgling sound had been coming from. I turned and ran from the room as quickly as I could toward the front door and out it, making my way to my neighbor's house. I damn near beat down the door when I arrived trying to get someone to open up as quickly as possible. The masked man was making long strides across my yard to where I was on my neighbor's porch so I didn't have much time. Right as the man entered my neighbor's yard, the porch light fired on and I heard the front door deadbolt being undone. I ran in and immediately screamed to call the police. My neighbor Cheryl had been the one to open the door but her husband had met us in the living room soon after. She had caught a quick view of the man as I entered and slammed the door behind me, locking the two deadbolts and the lock on the handle. They didn't hesitate or ask questions. Cheryl quickly grabbed her cell phone and dialed for help. I ended up talking to the person on the phone and let them know everything that had transpired up until the moment we called them. Around two minutes later, multiple police cars began to arrive, followed by two ambulances. The police entered my house, but didn't find the man. They rushed my mom to the hospital, where she had emergency surgery to try to repair the damage. She did survive the ordeal, but unfortunately, she now has brain damage due to what the doctors called cerebral hypoxia, which they told me means lack of oxygen to the brain due to dramatic blood loss. I wasn't allowed to enter my house for a few days while police and whoever else collected evidence. The man hasn't been caught to this day, and the case is still open. My parents had gone out of state to visit my grandparents, but I was taking a pretty rigorous course load and had exams and papers coming up, so I couldn't afford to miss the classes to go with them. I had never been allowed to stay home alone with both parents being gone for so long, never more than a couple of days, and my siblings were usually there. My parents would be gone for nine days. Having always been a night owl, it was perfectly normal for me to be awake at odd hours, 2, 3 a.m., just as I was on this night in question. I was sitting in my bed texting a good friend of mine, also a night owl, and browsing the internet when our three Labradors started barking like crazy. My family lived on 10 acres in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee, in a pretty wooded area, so I assumed they had just seen a deer or a raccoon or something. The dogs quieted down, so I didn't think anything of it for about five minutes. Then I hear what sounds almost like the window in the bedroom below mine opening. I think to myself, silly, you're just tired and psyching yourself out. That lasted for just a moment because I heard footsteps coming up the stairs. The stairs were directly next to my room, with the stairwell opening up right next to the door of my bedroom. I reached over to my door, not making a sound, and locked it. 
Afraid to make a sound, I asked the friend I had been texting to call 911. My bedroom was near the living room and kitchen so I could hear this intruder trashing the kitchen. Pulling open drawers, cabinets, tearing open a trash bag and emptying it onto the floor. The 911 operators called my cell phone, but I was too afraid to answer. Thankfully, my friend stayed on the line with them, and we answered all of their questions through him. I could hear the rustling slow down as the creeper moved a bit further from me into the living room. I hear steps retreat down the stairs again, and then silence. No dogs barking, no window opening. It must have been left open for the duration of this. About 40 minutes of sitting not alone, scared, crying, after the initial 911 call, the police finally arrived. They tapped on my bedroom window, which scared the crap out of me. I walked to the front door to let them in. A detail that concerns me most about letting the police in when I did. The security alarm started blaring. It had been armed the entire time. Another odd detail, the window that I heard open was the only entrance to the house that didn't have an alarm sensor. It had recently fallen off because of the weak adhesive. Nothing was taken, just sorted through. And a few days later, one of the neighbors called the police out for a similar incident. Truthfully, I don't know why my parents left me home alone because there had been a string of break-ins in the relative area in the weeks before. To my knowledge, there was never an arrest made in any of the cases. Last summer I came home to visit my parents and siblings. I usually spend my summers working for my university's housing, so I was really eager to get away from all that and spend a relaxing few months at home. My parents' house is in a decent neighborhood. Never had there been an instance of burglary or home invasions. It was a pretty quiet suburbia. I would even venture to say boring on some accounts. Anyway, last summer, the air conditioning was broken at our house, and my dad was going to have a repairman come by and check it out around 2 p.m., and he would leave work early to meet him. My mom and sisters were off to work and school, so I was at the house by myself. My room was upstairs. I took a nap and woke up to the sound of a door slamming at around 1.30. I didn't think anything of it because I thought it was my dad meeting the repairman a little early. I decided I'd go and join them to see what the damage was. I was eager to get the AC back because summers in Texas are awful. When I got to the second floor landing, I noticed something was off right away. It was dead silent. I heard my dad's gun cabinet open. The place where he kept his most prized guns. I thought it was strange, but my dad did love to chat and show off his things. I honestly had no clue what was going on. And then my cell phone rang in the bathroom next to my room. I was keeping it in there to charge because the outlet in my room was broken. It was my dad. He was calling to let me know that the repairman was coming at 3, instead of 2. Now, I've read where people talk about going cold all over when they're afraid, but at that exact moment, I felt like I was about to throw up everywhere. I was so scared, because whoever was downstairs was not my dad, and it apparently wasn't the repairman. I locked myself in the bathroom and told him what was going on. He promptly told me to call the police, and I did. The operator stayed on the line with me and said the officers that would arrive had a safe word they would tell me to assure it was actually them. I sat in the dark bathroom for what seemed like ages, my heart racing. Finally, there was a soft knock on the door. The man said it was the police and gave me the safe word, and I quickly ran out to meet them, almost hyperventilating. And in a flash, all of the police officers were training their guns on me. I held my hands up, freaking out, but they ushered me away from the door quickly. I didn't have time to ask questions because the officers turned on the bathroom light. Standing in the bathtub was a man. 
dressed all in black, clutching a knife. He was staring right at me. He was there the entire time. One night my grandparents were hosting a party. Neighbors and friends came and the party went on late into the night. Two of the guests, a husband and wife, decided to leave early as they were planning on having people over the next day to celebrate the wife's birthday. The couple goes home and the party continues. The next day, a family of this couple shows up for the planned celebration and finds them dead shot multiple times in a brutal home invasion. Obviously, their family and the entire neighborhood were completely devastated and terrified by this discovery. Months later, their murder is linked to several others that have occurred throughout the year in which the victims were shot with a 22 caliber pistol. Fortunately, one of the creeps committing these crimes wasn't very bright and gets caught and arrested while attempting to use their last victim's credit card. Investigation ensues, and two men, who are brothers, confess and are charged with the murder of my grandparents' neighbors, as well as eight other people. That story alone is terrifying, but the creepiest part for me is what my grandparents learned while attending the trial of these two disgusting individuals. They confessed that my grandparents, not their neighbors, were their intended target, having the largest and most secluded home in the neighborhood. The brothers had been to my grandparents' house previously. They had watched them and decided to come back on that night to carry out their plan, not expecting them to be having a party. That night of the party, they stood outside my grandparents' house watching and waiting for everyone to leave. Apparently, they got tired of this and seized their opportunity when they saw my grandparents' neighbors leaving the party early and walking home on foot and decided to follow them instead. There could be no better ending to this story than those two creeps rotting in jail, and I am happy to relay that this is exactly what happened to them. Someone's always watching me When I'm sleeping he just waits And he stares